Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. Uh, well, I recorded this video already. Uh, I decided not to post it yet because literally like the day that I recorded the last one is the day that Tesla opened their superchargers and I figured I needed to at least give them a little bit of credit for that because what I wanted to talk about was just defining public charging providers. And I, I feel like this is an important first step as we start to move forward because I don't think people have given a lot of meat to the definition of what it means to be a public charging provider. And the first basic standard is you have to be open to any electric vehicle owner. So if they can provide their own adapter or whatever, there can't be any sort of software locking, any sort of billing, billing locking. And that's really the main reason why Tesla never qualified as a public charging provider is because their chargers were software locked, not just hardware locked. So you could have created a CCS adapter, just a very basic adapter to feed power, but you'd never be able to charge there. So the fact that Tesla opened their superchargers now makes them a public charging provider by definition. But really what I was discussing in that other video is what does it mean to be a national public charging provider? And we have a lot of regional public charging providers. In fact, we have some that are municipal. So that Power Up Pasadena site, uh, and it's not just that site, there are multiple sites within Pasadena, California that are all sort of run by and sponsored by that city. So you have municipal uh, and then you have state. So Caltrans is trying to create their network. There's a whole lot of problems with that, but we don't have to get into that in this video. And then also just regional. So probably the most prominent regional one would be something like Francis Solar, where they're sort of in that middle America, started in Oklahoma. They're doing a lot of great work in uh, New Mexico. Uh, but you have things like the FPL Evolution, Evolve New York would be a state one, less than a regional one. Uh, but you have this smattering of municipal, state, regional charging providers. But a national charging provider, has anybody really even set what that standard is? And so my suggestion would be it's very basic, just a majority of the states and districts. So uh, just say bare minimum, you have to operate in at least 26 different states and District of Columbia out of the United States to be considered a national public charging provider. So to go back to Tesla that I was originally mentioning with their superchargers, thus far they've opened, I think 10 sites is that initial opening. Uh, so they're nowhere near meeting that minimum criteria of 26 different states operating to be considered a national charging provider. Right now there are actually only four national charging providers. And I was a bit surprised by the numbers because EVgo that for a long time, they were the largest public charging provider by site count. They're actually barely on this list. They're the fourth out of four public charging providers in terms of states and districts where they operate. They only have 32 states and districts represented out of 51. Uh, then the next one that surprised me above EVgo is actually EV Connect. They're operating in 36. And then, of course, the no surprise is that Electrify America is operating in 48. So I think they don't have Hawaii. They don't have Alaska. Uh, and there's one other state, I think, that and, – and I could be off on my count, and this could be dated information, but I believe there's one other state, uh, West Virginia maybe, that they don't operate in. And so uh, they're 48. And then the one that really surprised me was ChargePoint. ChargePoint is operating chargers in every state and every district in the United States. It makes them the number one national public charging provider by that metric. Now, we can get into issues of quality and site count and things of that nature um, where ChargePoint is a little bit limited, right? If you compared ChargePoint to Electrify America, you would put 
Electrify America way ahead of ChargePoint because even though they're only operating in those 48 states, uh, they have a lot more chargers. There are a lot more uh, powerful chargers, a lot more chargers per site. And the other issue is site access. A lot of the ChargePoint chargers that are deployed are deployed at dealership lots. And dealerships, while I do think that they need DC fast chargers, that's really more to support their own inventory, to support their customers, and to be used as maybe a training tool. So a lot of these dealerships that want to emphasize on selling electric cars, I think they need to work with some of these charging providers and say, hey, install a couple of your chargers here, maybe even only just one. Uh, and I want our customers to be able to use Electrify America, EVgo, ChargePoint, they come in, they buy their electric car, they get to test them out at the dealership, or our customers come through, they need to charge their car, they can use them. Uh, dealerships should probably be using Level 2 for their own inventory. It just makes the most financial sense, but having a few DC chargers on the lot to both validate, train customers, verify that accounts are set up, that sort of thing, I think makes a lot of sense. But I don't really consider those dealership charging sites to be that much of a contribution to the public charging network outside of that. So in that regard, yeah, Electrify America is probably the number one national public charging provider just based on those baseline metrics. And like I said, this is just more establishing a means to define what we're talking about when we're referring to public charging providers. And the other aspect of this, while saying, yes, there are these national public charging providers, there are a couple of well-known charging providers that you would think would be national public charging providers based on the fact that they're a publicly traded company, based on the fact that they're a well-known company, that they're making a lot of waves. Uh, but Shell Recharge, for example, and they recently bought Volta, they still fall short of that 26 states and districts basic metric. And then Blink, also a publicly traded uh, charging company, they fall well short of that 26 uh, state and district count. So there are a lot of these up and coming or well-known public charging providers that are just not quite meeting that criteria, that minimum uh, requirement to be a national public charging provider. Tesla, you know, like I said, to their credit, opening their superchargers, they could probably get to that point sooner than most other charging providers. Um, but uh, they're, they're still going to have to start focusing on areas with superchargers that maybe aren't in as populated of an area or that aren't surrounded by a bunch of other charging providers. So they're going to have to look at opening their superchargers on some of the interstate corridors, essentially, if they really want to be counted as a national public charging provider. Uh, and again, you know, just to show the sort of validity to this, though, Right now, it is only possible to drive across the country, say that cannonball run from Portofino and Redondo Beach to is it Red Ball Garage or whatever in New York City. There's only two public charging providers that would allow you to make that trip in a 200-mile electric vehicle using only their chargers. And right now, that's ChargePoint and Electrify America. ChargePoint... They have a few gaps. I noted in another video that their Mavericks first adventure stop chargers are now being taken offline, uh, which creates a bit of a gap there through Utah. But outside of that, and I mean, you can get around that either going up and through the Moab way or up towards Salt Lake City and crossing back down again, but you can still do it with just a minor delay in that sort of center of the country. But you can cross the country using only ChargePoint. You can cross the country using only Electrify America. Uh, and so it shows that there's some validity to this state count metric for what we should consider a national public charging provider. So I would love to hear what you think. What, do you think that that metric is maybe too low? Do you think it needs to be a minimum of 30, maybe a minimum of 40? Um, I don't know that we necessarily need to have it be 48 or 51 in the case of ChargePoint, uh, but it needs to start getting close to that. There needs to be some sort of line that we draw 
uh, where the definition for a public charging provider uh, transitions into a national public charging provider so that it really can inform people too. If you're going to have a membership or an account with a charging provider and you only want one, you're probably going to want it with a charging provider that would facilitate travel throughout a majority of the country, right? So I'd love to hear what you think. I'd love to hear what you think of this sort of definition of what it means to be a national public charging provider. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.